Hi, good morning everyone. Uh, this is Shubham on behalf of CLAD Possible and I'm here with today's newspaper analysis for 21st of Feb and we'll be discussing some important articles of the Hindu. Uh, so let's start with the first article which talks about a canal project which has been in dispute for a long back between Punjab and Haryana. This is the Satlaj Yamuna Link Canal. And the new Haryana governor, Bandaru Dattatreya, has stated that the Haryana government is committed towards constructing this Satlaj Yamuna Link Canal. Okay, this Satlaj Yamuna Link Canal will take a huge portion of the water of the Ravi Bias Satlaj River and transfer it to parts of Punjab and Haryana, linking the rivers to the Yamuna River. Hence, very important for Haryana's irrigation prospects as well as Punjab's. But it ben majorly benefits Haryana and that's why this dispute has started. Okay, so let's first look at the article, what they have stated in the article. So they have talked about the sharing of waters in the Ravi Vyas rivers. Apart from that, they have also mentioned that there is construction going on of some upstream storage dams and the name has been given. First is Renuka, second is Kishao and third is Lakhwar Vyasi. These three dams will be built on the Yamuna River. Okay. Apart from this, let's now delve into the details of this dispute. How did this dispute start? Okay. So the length of the entire canal is 211 kilometers, which is basically linking Satlaj with Yamuna. Okay. And this was planned in 1966, which was the year when Punjab and Hanyara were separated from each other. Now the portion of the 211 kilometer long canal was divided in such a portion that the longest part of the canal was falling into Punjab, which was 121 kilometers, and 90 kilometers fell into Haryana. Okay. Now, Haryana had already completed its part of the project by June 1980, but the Punjab government was stalling the entire project. And after a quite a while, Due to protest all over Punjab, they decided to shelve out the project. They basically removed the project. They said, we won't be doing it. Okay. So this was 1982. Now, the work has been stopped by Punjab. Now, if you remember the map, Satlaj passes through Punjab. And you are drawing water from Satlaj, transferring it to Yamuna. Haryana has built its part of the canal, but until unless Punjab builds its part, there will be no waters in the Haryana canals. Okay? canals there will be empty canals because there's no water coming from Satlaj because Punjab has not completed its portion. So what happens? In 1996, after a while, Haryana goes to Supreme Court, says that we had an agreement and now Punjab government is trying to back out of it. Okay. This judgment stalled for six to seven years. After that, Supreme Court directed Punjab that you better complete your portion. And you complete it within the year. But instead completing it, it filed a review petition, which extended it further. Okay. So the review petition finally got rejected and 2004, the CPWD, it's a Central Public Works Department, which is a, a authority under the central government, was appointed that take over the work from the Punjab government because they are not building it. You better do it. Okay. But what happened? Another obstacle. Punjab passed a law which is known as the Punjab Termination of Agreements Act in 2004, which said that every river water agreement Punjab has signed with any other neighboring state is terminated. Okay, so they are not, they are indirectly targeting the Satla Jamna Link Canal project. They said, due to this act, we are cancelling or nullifying every river water sharing agreement with any of our neighbors. Okay, now obviously this act was referred 
to APJ Abdul Kalam who was the then president okay and president you know has a power to refer any matter to the supreme court under article 143 okay so he sought an advisory jurisdiction and supreme court the matter was referred to the supreme court but again it was very very delayed due to all the obstacles and the changes of the governments which happened in the state okay the hearing started in 2017 the next supreme court order came which again directed that satluj yamuna link canal has to be executed by the haryana and punjab government and you better maintain law and order there shouldn't be any violent protests over the same okay we want full cooperation with punjab government over this issue but as we know again the change of the government happened the aap government is now in punjab there were meetings which were conducted recently last year it was conducted again a meeting was conducted between the punjab and the haryana cm and that was conducted by the ministry of jal shakti theek hai so we know the union minister is gajendra singh shekhawat so two meetings were conducted between the punjab and haryana government where basically the punjab government led by aap said that we don't have a single drop of water to share because our consumption is very high and we cannot share our water with any other state okay the the negotiations are going on right now but there is no solution which has been reached the supreme court has been emphasizing that punjab has to complete this project but punjab is not able to complete it because they say they don't have the water to share it with other state if they do share the water their own agriculture will suffer a lot okay so now this is the crux of the article now let's move on to the next article for our discussion which is visit of italy's prime minister giorgia meloni which is planned okay now giorgia meloni as we know was appointed last year only as the recent prime minister of italy replacing mario draghi okay a very important development has happened that because india and italy's relations were strained and we will discuss why okay a very important development in this field has happened where italy and india is eyeing a defense agreement a bilateral defense agreement and that will be a first of its kind india has never entered into a bilateral defense agreement with italy and this will be a first of its kind okay and this will be done on the sidelines of the raisina dialogue a raisina dialogue is supposed to be organized on 2nd of march and georgia maloni is poised to be the chief guest of the raisina dialogue okay theek hai now this is not the first time an italian president is visiting india but prior to this twice italian president prime minister sorry have visited india but defense agreements like these have never been reached okay so this is a very huge development now let's talk about why i was saying that there was a strained relationship between italy and india now there are three reasons which the article has discussed itself the first is there was an italian marines case which was between india and italy on the international affairs italian Mar- italian marines case is an international case which was going on in permanent court of arbitration between india and italy okay second they have discussed about the agusta westland helicopter scandal which also strained relationships between india and italy okay because of these two things the because of these two incidents india and italy's relations were strained now we'll talk about all of this okay first let me give you a small brief about the raisina dialogue so the raisina dialogue this year will be the 8th edition of the raisina dialogue it is a fairly recent dialogue which has been started by india in 2016 okay so where every international leader or every leader of a country is invited to the raisina hills which is the seat of the rashtrapati bhavan is in raisina hills delhi 
okay to discuss issues of international importance okay geopolitical health anything which is of international importance that particular year okay now this is organized by obviously the ministry of external affairs but with the help of observer research foundation which is a not for profit organization okay now let's talk about the italian's marine case what happened here okay italian marines case is basically a case where there was an oil tanker passing through the just a second exclusive economic zone of india okay so exclusive economic zone is extended up to 200 nautical miles where other ships can pass through okay peaceful peacefully they can pass through but they have to respect the sovereignty of other states also now there was an oil tanker named enrica lexi of italy okay enrica lexi had a lot of italian marines two of them saw a couple of fishermen near the coast of kerala and they thought them to be as pirates and they shot them and killed them okay the enrica lexi was uh intercepted by our indian coast guard indian marine okay and these two italian marines were arrested okay and detained now this created tensions between italy and india where the pca tried to medi mediate the matter finally saying that india had to give back the italian marines because there was no intent although india had the proper jurisdiction if they want to try but since there was no intent and the enrica lexi was an italian ship they should hand over the italians back to italy okay now this does not this did not materialize for a long time until 2017 when our prime minister decided to deport them back to italy thus bettering the situation by a while theek hai thoda sa better hua hamare beech ka relation okay so pca ke bare mein i'm pretty sure you are aware when we had our united nations class i am hoping so pca is nothing but it's also known as a precursor to the international court of justice it is a first international court of any kind which was established in 1899 at hague netherlands to arbitrate or to mediate disputes between two international countries okay so this gave the un an idea that there should be an international court of justice also which is also at hague okay now let's talk about the augusta westland controversy now augusta westland is a company which is situated in united kingdom british company hai but it's a subsidiary of an italian conglomerate known as fin mechanica okay there's an italian conglomerate called fin mechanica they have a subsidiary company called augusta westland okay which is situated in uk and makes helicopters specializes in making of helicopters so in 2010 february there was a tender given out by the indian government okay where indian air force needed 12 helicopters okay so fin mechanica or augusta westland came out with its bid theek hai jo bhi lowest bid karega usko mil jayega tender okay right so they bid the lowest with a very good quality of helicopters which was known as aw101 helicopters these helicopters were designed or inka purpose kya tha acquire karne ka that they were supposed to carry vvips president prime ministers okay to different different places so 12 of these helicopters were purchased at a cost of 3600 crore rupees okay but the problem was that fin mechanica tried cutting cost hua kya they promised a helicopter jiska ceiling will go up to 5000 meters high but they reduced the ceiling to 3500 meters जब आप सीलिंग रिड्यूस करोगे हेलीकॉप्टर की ऑब्वियसली यू सेव मनी ऑन मेकिंग ऑफ दैट हेलीकॉप्टर ओके एंड दैट वाज अलाउड बाय इंडियन ऑफिशियल्स ओके अब जब आप 
स्पेसिफिकेशंस लो करोगे यू विल मेक चीपर हेलीकॉप्टर्स बट यू आर स्टिल शोइंग दैट योर हेलीकॉप्टर्स आर एक्सपेंसिव सो यू आर सेविंग मनी एंड देन यू कैन बिड वेरी वेरी लो ठीक है सो जस्ट थिंक If I want a phone, let's say I want a phone, which has storage capacity of let's say five hundred twelve GB, or a sixteen GB RAM, I gave you the specification. I called it for a tender. That every company who can provide me with thousand units of phone with a five hundred twelve GB memory and a sixteen GB RAM with a good quality, let's say Qualcomm processor, okay. Please submit your bid. Now, let's say you will bid that I have such a phone, but you reduced specifications of this phone. You made it a two fifty six GB phone and a twelve GB RAM. Okay, but you are still showcasing it as a five hundred twelve GB phone and a sixteen GB RAM phone. Okay, and you had an agreement with Indian or me, let's say. in particular example that i am going to sell you this phone isme specifications kam hai but i am doing it so i can low ball every other company baki hoga kya baki sari companies kya lekar aayenge apni 512 gb ki phones aur 16 gb ki rams unka cost of production bahut high hoga but since i have been uh, going i i am planning to uh, you are planning to sell me a phone with a lower capacity and a lower ram your cost of production will be very low so you can bid very very low and you will win the bid okay so this happened with the augusta westland controversy the ceiling prescribed was 5000 meters but they submitted a 3500 meter ceiling wala helicopter as 5000 meter ceiling helicopter okay and they were able to win the bid because of this apart from this they also paid 360 crore rupees as kickbacks now what is a kickback kickback is nothing but goose theek hai convenience fee jisko aap bolte ho okay it goose theek hai so you are paying 360 crore rupees to indian officials to make the deal okay <coughs> excuse me i'm 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 under the feather a bit so excuse me for that okay so this was the augusta westland controversy before because of these controversies the fin mechanica was blacklisted also by the indian government okay another company which was blacklisted okay was known as the leonardo now leonardo is a weapons making company which is known for its torpedoes and because leonardo was also blacklisted a lot of our submarines don't have French origin Scorpion class heavy weight torpedoes. Okay, now important that Leonardo blacklist was or ban was also removed recently. Okay, in November twenty twenty one. Okay, so a lot of controversy, a lot of dispute, a lot of disagreements between India and Italy. But this is a very 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 important. step forward in strengthening of india and italy relationships okay now let's move on to our next article which is about the new niti aayog ceo which was appointed yesterday only his name is bvr subramanyam okay bbr subramanyam he was also union commerce secretary formerly served as a commerce secretary of the union minister as and he has been appointed the new ceo of niti aayog he is set to replace we all know that he will set to replace parmeshwaran nayar okay now parmeshwaran nayar himself has gotten a promotion and he will be appointed as a executive director of the world bank so parmeshwaran nayar is on a flight to washington dc and bvr subramanyam will taking the responsibility over from him as the new ceo of niti aayog okay and his term will be of a two year term okay and subramanyam ayer uh, parmesh sorry parmeshwar nayar who has went to the world bank his term will be of three years 
ओके नाउ परमेश्वर नैयर इज रिप्लेसिंग राजेश खुल्लर हु इज अ आई एस ऑफिसर हु सर्विंग एज द एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड बैंक एंड ही विल बी रिकॉल्ड बैक टू हिज होम कार्डर इन हरियाणा ओके नाउ आई एम प्रिटी श्योर वाइल्ड स्टार्टिंग मे बी स्ट्रैटिक जी के और economy you must have encountered about the niti ayog and the planning commission okay but let's revise what is niti ayog exactly so niti ayog dekho planning commission ke pehle main aapko thoda briefly bata do that planning commission ka plan kya tha to its main purpose was to come up with five year plans okay focusing on particular particular uh, sectors of indian economy so industrialization okay uh, agriculture ओके पॉवर्टी दीज वर स्पेसिफिक स्पेसिफिक फोकस ऑन द फाइव ईयर प्लान बट द प्रॉब्लम विथ विथ द फाइव ईयर प्लान एंड द प्लानिंग कमीशन अप्रोच वॉज दैट इट यूज टू मेक अ प्लान एंड टेल एंड इट यूज टू टेल एवरी स्टेट टू फॉलो दैट पर्टिकुलर प्लान बट द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट वन साइज डजेंट फिट ऑल हर स्टेट के रिक्वायरमेंट्स आर डिफरेंट एंड यू कैन नॉट फोर्स अ सिंगल स्कीम ऑन एवरी स्टेट and that's why our government decided to replace planning commission with a better bottom to up approach bottom to up approach matlab states will tell us what they need what their situation is and accordingly we will make tailor made plans for states or maybe if we don't make a tailor made plan for states we'll make a union plan a central plan which every state can tweak according to their requirement okay and that's why niti ayog came in place on january 1st 2015 okay the composition we know that the prime minister is the chairperson of the niti ayog apart from that we have a ceo we have a vice chair we have two councils also one is a governing council where all the cms and all the lieutenant governors will be members and second is a regional council it's not just a regional council but there can be multiple regional councils required according to the circumstance theek hai which will focus on a particular regional issue and will have members of the cm and lgs of those region okay let's say for example we have a regional issue let's say in northeast okay so there will be a north east regional council which will be made and they will have members of all the cms of the north eastern states okay so this is the composition of niti ayog apart from that they have two hubs one is the team india hub team india hub acts as a interface between center and states so when states have grievances they contact the center through the team india hub apart from that there is a knowledge and innovation hub also which does research and data analysis work for the niti ayog okay i have also given a few lists of indexes which niti ayog prepares one is mission life there's india innovation index which it also prepares there's an atal innovation mission index okay which it prepares aspirational district programs it has taken there's good governance index which it prepares export preparedness index it has prepared okay and there is a composite water management index which it prepares okay so this is niti ayog for you now let's move on to the next article which is a sport related article it's a very wholesome article in my opinion because slum soccer which is a non not for profit organization okay based out of new delhi whose aim is to aim at educating and elevating the homeless population specifically focusing on children in homeless communities okay or slum communities okay they help in education of those children and to develop sport culture among those children have been nominated for the laureus sport award for good or laureus sport for good award okay 
and this laureus sport for good award recognizes an individual or an organization which has made a significant contribution to transforming lives of young people through sports as a means okay a very important thing dekho this is a category of the laureus award okay so there is not a single laureus award there are multiple categories some of the categories are awarded every year but some categories are optional okay laureus sport for good award is an optional category so whenever a laureus thinks that someone deserves it they'll give it else they won't okay so it's a optional category but this year slum soccer has been nominated for this award okay now let's talk about the laureus sports awards for a while so this laureus sport award is an initiative of two companies one is daimler which is you know a very important car company based out of germany second is richmond which is a luxury goods company based out of switzerland okay these two have come together and established the laureus sport award in 1999 the first ceremony happened in 2000 and very famously जो की नोट स्पीकर होता है ना विच द की नोट स्पीकर ओके इज अ स्पीकर हु इज ऑल्सो द बेसिकली अ गेस्ट चीफ गेस्ट ओके द की नोट स्पीकर फॉर द फर्स्ट सेरेमनी वॉज नेल्सन मंडेला ओके द मोस्ट लॉरियस स्पोर्ट्स अवार्ड हैव बीन वॉन बाय लॉजर फेडरर ओके मोस्ट बाय अ फीमेल हैज बीन वॉन बाय सेरेना विलियम्स एंड द फर्स्ट फुटबॉलर टू एवर विन इट and a person from a team sport the first person from a team sport also to win it is lionel messi who won it in 2020 okay so this is about the laureus sports award okay last year lewis hamilton also won it for sports advocacy theek hai so that might also be an important for you so this is the second last article for the day now let's go to the last article which we have, where we also have a good news as in nr vignesh okay has become india's 80th grand master okay he did this by winning the 24th nord west cup in germany okay and he had achieved all the norms required so the norms required are more than 2 he had won four norms but he couldn't achieve the required five day ratings which is 2500 now this time he has achieved the five day rating also and he has given the title of a grand master and by the way another thing it's a small homework for you he also has a brother who is a grand master so these brothers both of them are grand masters okay now what is a grand master it's a highest formal title i am know that you must have heard of a title called super grand master super grand master is an informal title it's not a formal title grand master is the highest formal title you can achieve by achieving the 2500 five day rating okay and for that you have to achieve more than two gm norms now what is a gm norm it's basically nothing but one gm norm is a great performance in a tournament which has really strong players so for example uh, one of the requirements is that a tournament should have at least three grand masters okay if you play in a tournament which has more than three grand masters and you do really well in that tournament okay second it has to be more than a seven round tournament okay so more than a seven round tournament with at least three grand masters and you do really well then you have set to achieve one norm and you have to achieve more than two okay now norms bahut complicated hote hain it will also depend on how many rounds that tournament has how many gms that tournament has what are the combined average rating of your opponents okay so that's how you achieve a norm you do very good in a tournament okay <coughs> excuse me okay so after you achieve <coughs> excuse me these norms and you achieve the required five day ratings you become a grand master and this is a title 
it's not taken away from you if you go below the 5 day rating the only exception when the grandmaster title will be taken away from you is that if you cheat okay or if you defraud the 5 day okay so i hope this class was productive for all of you i have covered all the important articles according to me obviously that excludes the editorials which you have to do on your own i hope the class was productive for you and please try to cover important articles like we have been doing in the class pick out important topics so for example here we could I, we could have also covered what is five day what is this organization but since we have already covered in the past if we get an opportunity we'll do it in future as well but you should dig out some important terms which you are not aware about from an article and try to complete it by on by on your own okay thank you for attending i hope it was productive and happy preparation